Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a woodland trail, walkway, little path there uh, with some autumn trees. It should be a lot of fun tonight. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. I'll be showing you step by step how to paint this on your own. So let's get started. Welcome. If you're new to our channel, we're going to be painting through this uh, live with you guys tonight and you can ask questions as I'm painting. That's what Mark's here for, <laughs> among other things. <laughs> Let me go oh. for our colors. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, we've got uh, burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow oxide, cadmium yellow light, pyrrole orange, quinacridone magenta, ultramarine blue, thalo green, yellow shade, uh, unbleached titanium, titanium white, and gloss glazing liquid. Choose whatever colors you have. Obviously, this is kind of an autumn themed, so kind of lots of warm browns and yellow oranges and those kind of thing. But I've added the the blue and the green and the magenta to kind of give us some color mixing options. And I think I'm going to change some of the tones of the color a little bit. I've got a nine by twelve inch canvas. You need to switch that back over. Thank you. Um, I haven't done anything to, to it this time. I actually probably, if I had had enough time ahead of time, I probably would have painted it with some yellow, like a yellow color maybe underneath. So if you want to do that, um, it's actually pretty helpful to have a tone underneath sometimes when you're working. I'm going to start out with a 12 bright and I'm going to just use kind of a variety of different brushes. Uh, you'll just kind of want a small round for the trees tree trunks and things and uh, the bench. And then um, I like the filbert or um, angle brush or flat brush. They're all kind of about the same size, maybe about a half an inch um, for some of the foliage and other details, the path and things. And then I um, also may grab, I'm not sure, but I, I think I might grab my sea sponge for some of the bigger, because we've got a pretty good area up here. And then the um, Deerfoot stippler also for some of the smaller details. All right, so let's get going here. Um, let me let me do a very light sketch to start with, and that'll just kind of help us block in our main areas. So I'm going to kind of split this on a third, and that'll give me my horizon line, give me some perspective, and then we're going to do a little meandering path that just kind of does an S curve like that and then start parallel to that to this line kind of parallel and just barely come down from it a little bit that will make that you kind of have to have these parallel if you have them going off like that it's not going to look right let me turn this off because I feel like it's well I don't know I'm not sure <laughs> Just feel like that's getting shadowy. Yeah, shadowy. Let me try to try a darker color. So if you have your your path, if you've got your horizon line here and your path is going like this, um, it's going to look like it stops, like it's it's got an end here. So you have to you have to start on the horizon line and curve down from it. On both of these lines and that way your path will look like it's disappearing behind that curve instead of just ending at a uh, dead end okay so make sure you're doing that here so both of these should curve um, to the horizon line like that and then you can start to widen it out and if you imagine a your um, your um, vanishing point like this you can kind of fit your your path to sort of match sort of that width um, as it's going down it doesn't have to be within that triangle but you can kind of see sort of how wide a path that was that this wide would narrow so I don't know if that made sense but so if you're kind of bringing it up like this you should have it going wide out to here or so as it's coming around. Make sense? I don't know, maybe not. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. Okay. All right. 
welcome everybody. Hope you're having a good night. Glad yeah. you're joining us for this. Even though we're painting a fall painting, it's not very fallish outside. Well, it's pretty warm today. Yeah, it's been nice this week or prior to today, but mm -hmm. it got warm. A little warm all of a sudden. All right, so our little bench is actually pretty small um, compared to the rest. It's kind of uh, farther away. They've probably cropped off, you know, some of this up here. So um, I think somewhere in here I might make this out a little bit more, but our bench is going to be out here somewhere. I don't really need to draw it in right now. God help us, it's another chair. So... We'll just, it's not by the beach, I'm going to so. do my best. I, <coughs> so we're I, okay. At least I'm not, yeah, changing it up too much. So the... <laughs> Hopefully Osha's not watching. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't do well drawing chairs from memory, apparently. Um, I don't know how they work. Hey, you have to have one weakness. Mm -hmm. And chairs are your nemesis. Chairs are my nemesis, like, apparently. I didn't mm. know that. Until I tried it. <laughs> I'm going to angle that tree out so it's not just a big line up, too. And I think some of these also. So, um, And then most of this is actually kind of hidden by this big overhanging. And I'm going to do the same thing with these trees and kind of angle them in. Okay. So that's kind of... I think that's pretty good. I feel like I probably need to flatten out this curve a little bit more. It's, I think it's coming down too too far, but I'll do that when I paint it in as I go. All right. I do, I do better just getting the paint on canvas and not fussing with it too much. So, um, if you notice the, the light is, um, it's lighter back here and darker out, out here. So the light is kind of hitting these trees out here and lightening them up. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my yellow and cadmium yellow light and maybe some of the titanium white so we're going to lighten this up quite a bit back here and I'm just going to kind of put in this lightish area here that's going off behind my trees and forming this horizon line area and now there'll be darker stuff coming in front of it, obviously. Let me get my, we'll just get a kind of a brownish color. So I'm going to get burnt umber, burnt sienna, and some unbleached titanium. And that path is actually pretty light back here. So there's not a lot of darkness in this area. Not a lot of dark value to play with. So I'm just going to kind of do like that. Something like that. And we'll lighten it up. I want to go a little bit darker, so I'm kind of looking at the darkest areas, like around the sides of it, of the path, and things like that, to inform this color choice here. So it's kind of a medium brown color, and I can go lighter and darker with it as I need to. So that looks pretty good. Just blend that out. I'm going to blend this out a little bit. And then it's really dark over here, so I'm going to get some of the darker browns. And do that back here. Maybe even some of the green with my burnt umber. See kind of a mossy green color behind this thing here. And this kind of overhanging. It's not really a hill. What is that? Just kind of a whatever. Berm? I don't know. Where the trees up on a little rising or a little rise. Well, it looks like the path was cut into a hill. Right. Because yeah. it's obviously lower to the right. Yes. Let me get a little bit of this darker color back over here, too. That was good. To, okay, that looks good. And then we'll, we'll add our shadows and things on our um, path as we go. Then up in here... Um, let's go ahead and do a little bit of the sky that I'm seeing back here. Not a lot of it showing up, but there's enough that's worth painting that in. So I'm going to get the 
ultramarine blue. I grabbed a little bit of green there. That's all right. And my white. And then to make it less blue, you can neutralize it by adding black or gray. You can neutralize it by adding the complementary color to it. So that would be like an orange. Or we can neutralize it by adding brown, which is my favorite thing to do. Or like a neutral color. So any of these three are neutrals right here. The um, yellow oxide, the burnt sienna, and burnt umber are neutral colors. They're, see, and that burnt umber just tones it down immediately. And then grab more of that sky color or more white, I mean, and make it lighter. It's gonna, there we go, that looks good. I might even make it lighter than that, but we'll start there. So bringing that down, it's just gonna be kind of behind these trees here, so make sure that I've got it down far enough that I can have the trees peeking over the top of it and I'll peek this color, will come shine through. A little bit more white. And I'm gonna go a little bit lighter here. That looks good. Okay, and then I'm actually gonna use this color on my path, but my path is not dry enough yet, so I'm just gonna try to squeegee off as much of that as I can. Maybe get a, this is a little trick here, I get a palette knife set my brush down and just kind of scrape out the paint. You don't want to pinch it too hard because you don't want to damage your bristles, but look at all that paint I got out of it. So I'm going to just scrape that up and save my mixed up blue for later when I do the path and maybe some of the shadows on the tree trunks. I like to use blue when I use oranges because they're complementary colors. Like we mentioned before, complementary just means that if you look at a color wheel, they're opposite each other. So here's a color wheel. Here's our blue violet that we're right in here somewhere, right? And then so this yellow orange will be our complement to the blue violet. And so all these tree tree things that we're doing up here. Leaves, that's the word. Leaves, <laughs> tree things. Um, that's a new one. Tree things that we're doing up here <laughs> are going to be in this red orange to yellow, orangey yellow range. And so this blue, blue violet is going to be a really great um, color to go with it. Um, anytime you're kind of wondering, you've got a photograph that has a lot of one color and this photograph is all in this range. Um, and you want another color to kind of just make, give it a little bit of a pop, picking a color that's like opposite on the color wheel. Um, as long as it's not like too in your face, you wouldn't want to use like a full strength blue, like this bright, you know, dark ultramarine blue beside a really bright, vivid orange, um, because they would clash. But, um, using this kind of muted blue color that's opposite is going to be really pretty with these oranges and yellows. And it'll make our oranges and yellows um, a little bit more vivid and a little bit sing a little bit more. Okay, so that's good. Doesn't look like much yet. We'll get it there. Um, I'm going to spray my palette down now because I'm already kind of drying out here. Come on, spray bottle. I bought a new spray bottle, but it doesn't work as good as that one, even though that one's not working very well for me right now. So that says a lot. <laughs> um, plus it's huge. It's like way too big. <laughs> like, okay, I obviously didn't know how many ounces this one was when I <laughs> reordered. Uh, they are on my Amazon shop. I should have gotten it from Amazon. I, I bought it from TikTok. I, oh, I fell what? for that. TikTok ad. Oh. That's my bad. All right. <laughs> not not smart. No. Always not. buy from Angela's Amazon store. Right. It will exactly. never go wrong. Well, I can't, though. I can get in trouble for doing that. Well, I mean, but you could have still bought one, just not through your link. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. 
Okay, so I've got the green with the burnt umber here, which is what I used over here. I want to make it a little bit more, um, a little bit more blue, I guess. So I'm going to use the purple. I don't have purple, so I'm just making making purple with ultramarine blue and and uh, quinacridone magenta, and then adding it to the green there. So there are some darker trees back here that I'm seeing. So I'm just going to put that in back here. And honestly, when you when you're in this stage of painting, you're going to be like looking at this hot mess and thinking that you don't you're definitely doing it wrong. So just kind of keep on going. It'll get there. We just got to get got to make it ugly before we make it better. You got to kind of just do the work, get all of the we're putting in the bones of our painting right now. Um, and we're going to build on it on the bones and put the flesh and all that stuff. That sounds really gross, but all right. <laughs> Perfect for different. Halloween. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right. So I grabbed some yellow, <laughs> added it with this color just for a kind of a muted yellowish. And I'm going to add that sort of mid, mid range there going across. So if you're new to the channel, she usually has better analogies than that. I do. Hang in day. with us. Don't click off yet. It's been a weird day. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I... Okay. So. I think that's good. And I'm just going to kind of soften off some of that so it doesn't look so weird. Okay. So. Just trying to soften that off and I'll I'll be putting other colors on top of this stuff so um, I actually may just kind of darken this up a little bit more because I kind of started a little too light when I put my highlights on you kind of have to have some place to go with your highlights if you have everything too too light right off the bat at least with acrylics with the watercolors it's different but with acrylics you want to go dark and then work your way back to light color and then over here let's just go ahead and use burnt sienna and burnt umber and we'll just fill this area in with this dark rusty reddish and I'm just going to I'm not really worried about my trees right now because we'll be putting those in over the top. We just kind of need some dark colors so that when we put our color on top, it pops and we can see all the contrast. We're going to create contrast with it. All right, so this is dry. Let me go ahead and use some of this burnt sienna down here across my path here where it's kind of got a shadow from all these trees here. Dark it darker there. Okie doke. Done. Mm -hmm. That was easy. Thanks for watching. No. It could be actually. <laughs> it mean, is, it is a style. A it's a style. Yeah. You've probably seen stuff like this. So this is kind of we're we're just taking it down to bare bones right now. I would be really proud if I had painted that right there. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um kind of need you to dry it I think well I don't I don't know I can well I can probably do some stuff over here I'm just trying to think I need to do this first and this is all wet right here so um, yeah just a quick dry just it's not that wet so it shouldn't take long you can yeah let me show you what we painted on sun a uh, Saturday this week we did our well, I finished actually grab both of our paintings that we did. So we did this one on um, Saturday. It's our little boho cow, uh, Highland cow. I kind of gave her a little doe-eyed look, but it, you know it could easily be a little bit more um, angry, or <laughs> you know, uh, move those eyes apart, add more hair in front, and she doesn't look so young. Um, 
but that one was fun. I really enjoyed that one. It's a think about four hour painting, something like that, um, that we do for our $5 level um, patrons once a month. Um, and then this is our challenge painting that we did um, with our $10 level. Uh, and we worked on this for over three weeks. I think this was like six, six and a half hours, something like that. Um, and we work on these on Thursdays with that group. Um, they have their own Facebook group and we do live streams with them every Thursday, or I do, um, every Thursday at two. So, um, and then you can obviously watch the older ones, but we have like several hundred of each bonus video and challenge. The $10 level gets access to all the $5 level stuff too. So lots of good, um, value in there. I'll show you our one we did a couple months ago. There's our little baby cashmere who passed today. So we're dedicating the video to her, but that was one of the $10 level challenge videos that we did a couple months ago. So, all right. And that is all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm turning off your mic. Or I will. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, And everybody gets the free videos, right? What? Everybody gets the free videos on YouTube? Yes, and we have about uh, two uh, or three. 600 free videos oh, on YouTube. Oh, so. okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's over, I think there's actually 700 free videos on YouTube over the last 10 years that we've done. So, um, yeah, been, they add up when you do like two a week busy. for 10 years. Yep. <laughs> We're only doing one a week now. <laughs> We're. I'm semi-retired, semi not really. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever fully retire because I love this too much. This is, a lot of people said, you know, sent me messages saying not to paint tonight, but painting is my happy place, so. Mm -hmm. You know, she didn't see hanging out with Mark. What? <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> okay. Let me see. Actually, I don't want that color. What am I doing? So I'm going to get some yellow with this. I'm going to, I got a little bit of water on my sponge and get some yellow. It actually is not bad to have the, the um, burnt umber, burnt sienna though, because it'll give us a little bit darker, darker color underneath. So kind of basically mixing all of those together. So I'm going to, I'm going to find a spot that's got a lot of good little nooks and crannies in there. I'm not covering the whole sponge. I don't need that. I'm just going to squeeze it to a small enough area for me to be able to control it. And I want to leave a little bit of this, maybe about that much of the sky um, open because we're going to put this brown red tree over the top. So this yellow is going to kind of come up to like right in, actually kind of right where we have already painted the yellow. So that's what I'm gonna go over and just dab to create a little bit of texture and you should just be able to barely see it over the top. And I've done it pretty close to the same value as this background. So which is kind of a medium, that brown kind of darkened it up the yellow. It's gonna make a nice color for us. So real quick, you said that you wet the sponge. So do you like dip it completely and then wring it out? So yes. It's, okay. Yes, but it's it's, it's not. not if water. I squeeze it, there's no water should come out. Okay. So you gotta you want it damp, but not wet. Not, gotcha. Not no water wet. dripping out no, and ruining no, your painting. No streaks and all that stuff. Right. Got it. Yeah, because you're pressing down, and so if there's water in it, and you press down, it'll run water on your canvas so you definitely don't want it wet 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 and this one's actually pretty big they come smaller than this I just grabbed this because it was handy right here so that's good not not a lot of detail back here so I'm not going to worry too much about painting any individual trees because the ones in front are going to kind of take the precedence over can you move that down for me and in a little bit I need it right here I I gotta find the mouse first down and... Uh-huh, because you're covering up part of my... Oh. Yeah, there. That way. There, thank you. 
you guys can see it, but I've got a little <laughs> reference photo that I'm painting along with. The video. She's right. watching herself paint. I watch myself paint. Just it's the, like stepping away from looking at your p painting at a distance. I can't step away, obviously, so it helps me to be able to look at it in small because it's like getting a little bit uh, distance from what I'm doing right here. So it's good to get in the habit of doing that. Do a little section, step back from it, look at it at a distance, see how it's kind of working, and then come back to it. What were you going to make fun of me? Oh, I was going to just say, you know, you, you only do this so you can watch yourself paint. Right. <laughs> yes. I have to say, I have, <laughs> I have watched some of my videos recently. No. It's a little, it's a little, I mostly don't, but every now and then I get suckered in because I really enjoyed painting it and I want to see if I explained it very well and then I'll end up watching most of it and, and think, oh, I should have said whatever, you know. That's why I don't usually watch myself back because I'm always like critiquing myself. Well, you can always. I've, I'd be the art police sending me <laughs> myself messages about how I should have done this differently. You can always overdub, <laughs> like we do with <laughs> ornaments. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Still one of my favorite things we've ever gotten <laughs> from our <laughs> followers in the mail was those ornaments. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Somebody sent us ornaments mm -hmm. one year that said balls and <laughs> ornaments on them. It's great. Because I had just done a whole video where I said balls. Christmas <coughs> Way balls. Way too much. All through the <laughs> Way too <video>. much. <laughs> okay. I've switched to my filbert here, number four. And I've mixed up a dark, a little bit more of that dark green that I had before that had the, like, purpley tones in the uh, green. And I added burnt sand or... Um, burnt umber to it this time so it's a little bit more muted and I'm just going to go in here and add a little bit a few little darker elements kind of some maybe some oh like cedar trees or something back here I'm seeing some overhang and I just need to get these darker bits in so that I can add my lighter bits on top just make sure I've got it dark enough. Some of these areas that looks a little bit better. And sometimes, like when you start with a with a yellow background, it's easier to see how dark you need to go with your values. So since I started with white canvas, anything I put on it seemed dark, and so I just didn't go dark enough in my background. And that's just because I started with plain white which is fine, you know, you can still correct it. It's just, I would say, go ahead and do that. Start with the, like a yellow ochre or, or yellow oxide or even a burnt sienna on here, and then you'll have it nice and dark. Um, or, you know, at least just like a little bit more of a understanding of how dark to go in some of these areas. And I'm gonna go even darker back here too. So, um, let's go ahead and use this. Uh, let me think. Yeah, let's go ahead and put in our lighter yellows. So our more golden yellows. And I'm going to try to use this same area of the sponge so that it's kind of influenced a little bit while it's already there. But most of that was already off. And... If it, did you see how, what happened to it? Let me do that again. You see how it all mushed up there? And it was just like one, if I put that on the canvas, it's going to imprint a big blob. Like there's no fuzziness to it. So I have to tap it to kind of open it up. And now there's like little openings. Okay. That's so magic. Little, little tip there. Hey. And get some white too. What? Do you have to do the trees with a sponge? No, you can use the smaller thing. I just, it's just faster. That's all. I just like to do it sometimes when I'm right. Okay. Not want to paint any. Don't no. use don't well, use your hair. You don't like. This is how many you can do one. 
Like, so if you, have you can a, do about 20 brush strokes with this versus yeah. this. So the Deerfoot stippler could be another option if you don't have a sponge. Right, okay. if you don't have a sponge, yes. Or you can use even like this. These these work oh, great yeah, too. Yeah. Um, in fact, I've I may I may the use Bob that Ross later. I just thought of it. Yep, the old Bob Ross method. Just keep it kind of dry and tap it. Do the tapa tapa te- technique. <laughs> shout out, <laughs> Chef John. Shout, shout out to Chef John. Yep. All right, a little bit of burnt sienna here. Gonna. Okay, see that? So now we've got those darker colors underneath. So when we put these on top, it's they're, they're popping a little bit, a little bit more visible. Gonna have a little bit in here, lit up. All right, a little bit right in here, and then this is this is about all I can do with this though because it's gonna start to be difficult to control in these smaller areas. So I'm going to get a little bit more of that burnt sienna color and just use that down here low. And if you start to get, did you see what happened there? Like if I do the same, I've got like like a big blob of that burnt sienna on here. Um, so I just want to make sure that I don't do that. So I'm going to get some of that green, maybe some of that green from back there. Yeah, there we go. All right, it's all right. Okay, so starting to get there, getting closer. Mm -hmm. Now we want to put in our um, some tree branches and things, but I actually need to do that far, far stuff first before I do that. Let me, I should have put on a glove, I forgot. So now I'm gonna have dark, dirty cuticles for about a week. <laughs> like I've been digging in the dirt outside it's like when I pick the tomatoes out of our garden oh, yeah. oh my gosh I'll get that green whatever that is on them in my cuticles it does not come out it gets down in here too all right um uh, yeah let's go ahead and use the deerfoot stippler I think that's probably small enough and We'll put this red tree that's back here. So I see a red tree. I'm going to get a little bit of the orange with the burnt sienna. That's that pyrrole orange. But you could use cadmium red light if you don't have pyrrole orange. It's just going to kind of brighten up that burnt sienna a little bit. I kind of want a little bit of both on here. So kind of just tap through. So there's a little bit of both and maybe a little bit of the darker even. So kind of a little bit of the lighter on top and the darker toward the bottom. And I'm just going to tap with the tip down side to side to create this little tree right here. All right, and that's all you have to do. Uh, I might have a little bit more over here coming over. And maybe I'm just gonna kind of use it and tap along my walkway there too. Just a little bit of that color. Okay. Looks good. And then now, and I want to, I'm going to spray this because I don't want it to dry out on me. So I'm going to spray that because I'm going to use it again up here. So and I'm going to spray my paints. Here, just keep them wet. And oops, I got water all over this. I didn't mean to do that, but that's all right. Um, thankfully, it was dry, otherwise it might lift. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and do this lighter green color back here. So that's really light. I'm going to start with white. Whenever you have a, like a really, really light color, um, just start with white. Otherwise, you're never going to get your color dark enough or, you know, bright enough. You're just going to end up with a huge amount of whatever color you need to mix. So start with the white and add a little bit of color to it. And then you're going to end up with, you know, closer to what you want. So that was the, I think, um, that was the color that we originally did that where we added the, um, I think, burnt burnt umber and 
ultramarine blue to the yellow, the two yellows. So that's how we got that. Because when you add um, ultramarine blue and burnt umber, you get kind of a gray. And then when you add yellow to black or gray, you get a, like a dark muted green. So I'm going to add a little bit of the orangey color to it too. So I have like a couple of different versions of that color. And then maybe a little bit. Hi, why is my palette so wet? It's all soupy. <laughs> I keep trying to mix color and it's just like a big puddle. Here, I must have sprayed it one too many times. Okay, so I don't need that much paint in my brush. I'm just going to get right in there. That area of the white kind of ended up kind of light. So added a little bit more yellow over here. This one's got a little bit more muted tones. It's this color. Mixed it and then I mixed a little bit more of this but it's it's not quite as bright as this here with the burnt umber and ultramarine blue with a little bit of both of those yellows there. Okay. So then I'm going to tap in. Ooh, that, there we go. Tap in on the top of these bushes. I'm just going to kind of pick different versions of these colors here and create a story here. And so this is going around. I don't want to cover this up because remember, we don't want that to come to a, uh, a hard end right there. So I'm going to try to leave a little bit of that and just kind of gradually do a slope of greenery coming up around that corner right there. And then back here, it's a little bit more. I'm going to even get a little bit more of that yellow, just the brighter yellow and do that right at the base of those. There we go. And then a little bit coming around right there. Okay. And then right here, it comes up to about the same height here eventually. So I'm going to kind of put some of these there, kind of these long branchy type things. So do a couple of those like that where they look like they're kind of shooting up. There's a couple of them back here like that. Okay, um, not loving it, but we're we'll get it there. I think I I think I don't have any dark a dark enough tones back here, so I'm gonna get a little bit more of that darker green here, and just go back in underneath and try to tap in some darker values than kind of at the bottom of our little hill. That that helped, and then. Back here, there's like some burnt umber. Just gonna kind of pull up with that. A little bit right there. A little bit right here, kind of coming over the walkway. In the front. Okay, that looks all right. Get a little bit of the white, and this is where I'm going to get my blue. Get a little bit of that blue, and I'm just going to kind of go side to side with this. Leave plenty of that brown. I may I may do better with a different brush. This one's being a little bit hard to control. And I don't mind that I'm kind of a little too light. It'll dry a little bit darker, so you might be surprised at the color you end up with. And it's okay if I go over my other stuff there a little bit. It'll be fine. I'm going to add a little bit of this color in my highlights too. Look at how pretty that is with the 
the oranges already. It's a really great color. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit more of the darker blue, a little bit of the purple, or like make a little little tiny bit of a purple. I don't want it, I don't want it too purple though, so if it's looking too purple, then you can add a little bit of burnt umber. I think this one's gonna be okay because I've got all these other colors in here. But I'm gonna add it in here in my shadow area. I'm gonna kinda use a little bit of that darker, like more purpley blue. A little bit darker tone right in here. Isn't that beautiful? Love this. Love it. Okay. And then wipe that out and get a little bit more of that light blue, maybe a little bit of the unbleached titanium. So back to the light blue in this foreground area where the light's hitting the path again. And then we can make it kind of patchy. There's trees, so you know it may not be like a perfectly, kind of like that. I don't know, we'll see. It may not, well, yeah, because it may not be quite where where we want to be right now, but yeah, we'll get it there. The path isn't smooth like a paved road. It's right. got bumps and nooks and crannies and exactly. things like that. So Yeah. Get ultramarine blue and mix it with my burnt sienna and burnt umber. And I'm gonna tap it along the edge of the path right here where to do that leaf litter that's kind of covering the path in places. This'll help kind of um make our path look a little bit better too. So go up over the pathway in some places like in the sunny areas, maybe use a little bit more of the lighter tone. And then down here, we're using the darker. Okay, that looks good. Dark magenta. So I'm really using these four colors Burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber, Magenta, and Ultramarine Blue for this. And depending on how much purple you want, you know, if you want it to be like really purple, you'd add more of these two colors. If you want it more neutral, you'd add more of these two colors. If you want it more warm, you add more of these two colors. If you want it cooler or, you know, darker, add more of these two, the blue and the, the um, Burnt Umber. So... A lot of different ways we can go with using these four here. Great colors to add depth and interest to our shadowy areas. I love it. Okay, that's looking really good. I think we're on the right track here. I'm just gonna. You could say we're on the play. right path. Oh. Do we? I have one of those sounds I always forget. <laughs> You missed it. You missed your opportunity. Okay. You can say you're on the right path. <laughs> I, I'm kind of glad I can't hear your sound effects. <laughs> uh, not, not true. <laughs> true. Um, uh, I'm okay. I'm so glad we got this. <clears throat> Boys and their toys. All right. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and continue with this. I have zero places on my palette left to work, so I'm going to spray it one more time and scrape off the spot. That is one of the bad things about using the sponges is they do get messy. They take up a lot of room on your palette. So it's almost good to have a separate... Um, you know, a separate spot, uh, like a plate or foam plate or something like that to use with one. Okay, so for the trees up here, um, I might go, I think I'm going to go a little bit more um, saturated, like a little bit more saturated orangey red. So I'm going to get a little bit of magenta and that cadmium red light, or I'm sorry, it's pyrrole orange in this case and then burnt sienna. So that'll be my dark red. And then if I want it darker, I can go burnt umber with it too. Okay, let's see what that does. I feel like it's not quite the right color yet. 
Okay, we'll try. And I don't know. I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I'm just going to kind of use it up here. Um, yeah, that's all right. Okay, so I'm going to use it up over the sky. And, okay, oh, that's all right. And I'm realizing that I really need to switch to a smaller brush and that I need to do my dark um, tree trunks now. So I'm going to have to set aside that sponge even though it's got a lot of paint in it. Grab my round brush and I'm going to make a dark tree trunk color. And I'm going to use that same dark color that we were using for the path stuff. So I'm going to get these four, these four, the ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and a little bit of magenta and burnt sienna. So make a dark purpley blue. And that's what I'm going to use for my tree trunks. And just keep adding. If it's not dark enough, add more burnt umber and more ultramarine blue. Those two will make it darker. You can even add more green to it if you need to also. Or you could just get black and add black to it. I am just left black off my palette today because I didn't really think I was going to need it. But Use what you like. All right, so I'm going to... Do I think I want my tree kind of living in this little area right here. And I'm going to kind of have it go away from my path and then curve back in. So I'm going to kind of flatten out the base of it and just sort of spread out that trunk a little bit. Make it a little bit wider. It's not too small. And just meander it around here. Whatever shape you want it to be, yeah. it's your tree. Just as long as you kind of make it a little bit wider at the base as it comes down. So you don't want any of the branches to kind of get thick in the middle and then thin again. <coughs> That would be unnatural. Right. <clears throat> I feel like you want to make a joke, but... <laughs> 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 About being thick in the middle, but... Well, yeah. I, you, know, <laughs> you don't want it to look like Mark, is what you're saying. I, let's not you know, beat around the bush anymore. <laughs> then on top, thicker in the middle, then on the bottom... Chicken legs. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> yeah, no comment. Well, I never knew how thin my legs were until I had to shave the hair off them because I had poison <laughs> ivy. <laughs> you can still see it, can't you? <laughs> you, you Mark? I was the original ham on stilts. <laughs> for a dog yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. okay I'm gonna do some like little stick stuff down here like some grassy kind of things too and then I'll do little bushes right here so I think that's good enough and I'll do some greenery or you know some stuff coming off of there but I think that's good I don't want to too much detail with this I'm gonna Oh, I didn't think. I wish I had not. You see what I did here? I kind of made a pattern. Kind of wish I hadn't put those two openings at the same. Like it's better to have one coming down over here. So I'm going to add one over here to kind of break up that 
pattern sameness. No matchy matchy. Right. You don't want matchy matchy on your tree trunks. So I think that's good. That's better. And then just kind of widen out. Maybe make one a little bit obviously thicker than the other one so that they also kind of look different. Okay. Eh, I don't know if I love that. I think that this just needs to be a little bit wider. <sighs> we'll see. I did it again. I did it right there. Do you see that, what I just did? Do not do that, Angela. Why? You're just practicing to show what people not what to not do. to do. That's really Don't what we're, do that. we're doing it for you, okay, let me the viewer. Wipe that off and try that again. My goodness. Okay, I better. Okay, that comes down there. I don't know. All right, I'm getting too fussy with that one. I'm not liking it much. Let's just move on. Um, so this one back here, there's just a little hint of a trunk. I'm just going to kind of tuck in a couple branches in there. Dark. Maybe way back in the back and you can... <clears throat> Contrast is what creates depth, so don't be afraid of going really dark in order to bring out some lighter colors too. Let me just go up in here with some longer. All right, good enough. Moving on. Um, and then we said, like, right here, we're doing this big tree coming over here. And I didn't want it to be straight up and down. I wanted it to be kind of hanging over. And then we can put some branches kind of coming down from over here, coming across. Right. I think this brush is just too thin. I'm going to get the wider brush. So I'm just having a hard time getting these thicker tree trunks. There we go. So I do want it to go off the canvas, but I just don't want it to go straight up and down. Just wasn't feeling that look. All right. A little bit better. I feel like feels a little cozier, maybe. And there's some smaller tree trunks kind of angling out this way. Keep in mind not to repeat your patterns like we did over here, you know, so try not to have the tree trunks all lined up and evenly spaced and that kind of thing. I'm going to have these branches kind of grip in this hill like that and spread out to grip that hill. And these ones are just going to be kind of dark back here. Much better. Okay, so kind of a medium tree back there. That looks good. So right now it looks kind of obvious, like right there, you know. Um, so what I want to do is um, add some of this color to our background. Um, so I'll just squeeze it out of that brush, get my stippler here, and I'm going to 
use that dark purpley color in this background area. And add, come on, I've already run out of it. There we go. Just add that nice dark base back there. Kind of helps hide the hide the branches a little bit. Kind of just makes everything look a little bit more settled. Gives us that deep woods feeling too. Nice dark. You can add this color before you do your tree trunks too. So. Either or or both, you know, you could add it before, you could do your trunks and then decide if you need some more later, whatever you want to do. But I definitely think I just needed a little bit darker back there. And then And then for this tree, what color do we want it to be? I think I'll, I think I'll make it yellow. I'll go ahead and grab the yellow, and I haven't cleaned this purple out of my brush, so it'll tone that yellow down to an interesting color. Might add a little bit of the burnt sienna to it, and we've already got some of this yellow back here, so we won't have to do much. But I just want to bring it up. I'm going to just cover some of this that I don't like to maybe get some of that background color and put that in right there. Some of that um, tree trunk color I meant. Okay. It's looking a little bit like a hot mess right now, but we'll get it there. That one is not showing up bright enough, so I'm just going to get some white now. Add that to my yellow, a little bit more bright yellow. So I want to go several shade lighter here, and I want to just hit the tops of this tree with that. That will bring it forward for us. Okay. I don't love that one. Not really sure what it is about it, but I don't love it. I think it's too too much the same over here. Plus, the only part I left is the part that is the matchy matchy. So I'm just gonna take that out, and I'll put something else in there. Let's add a little bit of orange to it. Yellow. There we go. That's better. Just a little different tone from what we had before. I think that helps make it look different from that background. All right, I'm just going to cover all that because I really hate that tree trunk altogether. And I'm just going to put them back in. The magic of painting. Over. Yeah, right. And I have the quote right here from August 20th, 2022. Okay. If you don't like it, hide it. There you go. Well, there you go. That's it. All right. I I think I'm going to... Well, let's just take my own advice. And I think I'm going to hide that whole little bit there. Just make it smaller. I'm going to get the green and my yellow... I think I must have gotten some blue there because that kind of made a really muddy green. And I need white. I think I, I think I want this tree to go a different direction is what part of it is. Nothing set in stone. 
we're changing it from the original, so that's why it's always a risk doing that because sometimes it doesn't work, and that's okay. You just have to kind of adapt. Everything can be painted over until it's done. We're not done, so. <laughs> Going to add some of the green here. And then we'll just add some things over the top of that. All right, I think I want to go a little bit lighter back there. I think that's part of the issue. It was a little too much the same color as my foreground trees. So I'm going to get a little bit of that muted green and add the white to it. I have too much of my orange in here. It's just turning it orange. Get that green. Look at how much paint is in that brush. My gosh. Just squeegeeing it out. It's going to be fun cleaning brushes tonight. And then that one, yeah, I don't worry about that one. <laughs> okay. Get that clean. Get my white. Get a little bit of that green that I just mixed. That was the green with the yellow and orange. And come across right here. That was that background area. And then we'll do another layer here, getting a little bit more yellow as it comes closer to us. Right through here. Okay, and then our area here, I think I just want a little bit more like burnt sienna color. Right up in this area that's under the shadows. So kind of three different layers. And just make sure that you kind of have those colors going across. You see how I have that yellow over here. So, all right, so now we're, we're better. And... We can either leave this tree way back here, and that's fine, or we can bring it forward by doing a little tree trunk right here. But I think if I do a tree trunk, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and a little bit different than I did before. So I'm going to kind of angle it this way. And just make it a little smaller. Okay. There's a lot of paint down here right now, so it's not one to... We'll just let that set. It's not gonna do anything for us right now. Okay, so this is dry, so we can put our highlights on our shadow trees. And I'm gonna switch to a small filbert for that, the number two filbert. And we'll use some of this color, this blue that we used on our path. And add a little bit of that darker color from our tree trunk to that, which basically is our tree trunk color plus a little bit of more blue and a little bit of white. And I'm just going to dab with this brush on my light side, which is over here. Not going all the way to the edge, just leaving a tiny sliver of that darker color. those two to sort of bridge the gap. 
between the darkest dark and the light, lightest light area. Okay. And if they're getting hit by sunlight, you can go more like yellow highlights, you know, like if you think this tree is getting hit by sunlight, you could do more of a yellow, but I think I'm going to stick with kind of a more of that purple tone for our shadows because this, this area is pretty dark, I think. Don't think you're getting direct sunlight here. So I'm just keeping the trees a little bit lighter. A little bit more muted. Okay, that looks good. Just a little bit of that color there. All right. It does feel like it's overpowering, doesn't it? I, d I don't know. Maybe we do need a thicker tree over here. Something to anchor this side. Um, okay. So let's go ahead and use the reddish color. And I've already, this is drying out. I just need to get it wet and keep it from drying out or it'll ruin my sponge because it'll dry in all the nicks and crannies and then it won't hold the paint well for me next time I use it. So I'm going to make up like a burnt orange color, which would be quinacridone magenta and burnt sienna. So quinacridone burnt orange um, is discontinued, so I don't use it as much. One of my favorite colors, but you can mix it yourself with kind of equal parts of those two. Okay, so that looks good. I'm just going to kind of bring that over. That's a really pretty color in it. Well, do that. So I'm definitely making this a little bit more saturated than the than the reference photo. Just, you know, a little, little tiny bit more. Need a little more color. So let's bring that over the yellow tree and that will immediately push that yellow tree back. See that? And maybe we'll use a little bit of the orange in some places. And that dark, dark purple really helps too because it gives us some weight to the branches here. I think I might need a little bit more of that. So I'm going to mix up some ultramarine blue with the burnt sienna and add some more of that darker color down lower here as it's coming down okay and honestly you could tape this off but I'm just gonna kind of try to stay away from my tree trunk if you go over this tree trunk and you don't want to then you can paint it back in later. Really probably should have waited on this one since it's the one in the front. Did this these three in the back and then did this one in the front here. So any tree branches that cover over it are in the right perspective. But I didn't notice that until just now. So <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> Getting some yellow and orange here. I'm just going to do some brighter tree, tree branches coming down from a tree out of our vision here. We can't see it. Um, there's one back here, maybe. Um, I don't love that, but I might put some of the red on top of it. just feel like I needed some of that color back there. And then let's do some really bright yellow right here coming out from in here somewhere. Coming over, creating a, another plane back there. There is a 
tree trunk back here that I didn't see before. So I'm going to put that in back here. All right. And then any of these tree branches that got covered over that you don't want covered, you can paint back over. Um, I'm going to get some more of that magenta and burnt sienna. Put that back over this now. See how that kind of helped brighten up this red and the foreground just a little bit. And maybe bring it this way just slightly, swing it. Okay. And then there's a little bit of like a really bright reddish orange just in here. So I'm just going to kind of do that right through there. Maybe a little bit of it back behind there. Okay. And then that tree actually kind of comes all the way off. So I'm just going to kind of keep adding these leaves here. It's really, really big. And this whole area here is just pretty much covered. Just a little bit of that sky peeking through. I think what sells it is that dark, dark area at the top. So we need to make sure we leave this kind of dark area kind of coming down here. That makes it look shadowy. Okay. I don't want to overdo either. It's pretty easy to end up with a big blob of nothing. So, all right, let's use this down in our pathway now too. So all these trees from our tr branches up there are gonna be falling on our walkway. So we've got the darker ones in. So I'm just gonna get some of these lighter colors and add those. Tap them in you know, down here. Some of the yellow and do some of those too. And then do a few little random pops of orange down low. Here and there. Okay, I think that's good enough. I think I'm gonna put some of this mossy green on this hillside right here that'll help balance it out a little bit so I'm going to get some of that green that we mixed up before and put it over the moss and then, let me see get some yellow burnt sienna green there we go a little bit brighter there There we go. Not too bad. Let's go ahead and um, define this tree a little bit better. Now that we've got that background dry, it'll come on. There we go. Okay. And I might do 
some little grasses. I could switch to a smaller brush, probably do a better job of this. Some little grasses and things. And then this area up here, let me get this brush back. This area up here has some of that leaf litter in up in here too. Kind of in between the tree trunk area coming down that hill. Alright, let's put in our bench. I'm not loving this. I don't know. I still I'm not really sure exactly what it is, but I think I might put something in this that's a little bit down low, like maybe a little I don't know. I don't want to ruin it though, because I don't I don't hate it right now, so don't want to make it worse. But you never know unless you try, so we'll <laughs> just we'll just see. Alright, I'm gonna get a little bit of uh a lighter color here, and I'm just going to kind of map out where I want this bench. So it's gonna, it, huh? it's gonna set so that back end of it is here and here, and then the base of it it comes out and back up and around, and then straight. Here and here, and if we make our vanishing point over here, we can kind of line up our our bench slats to that. So it's going to be uh, looks like our vanishing point is this way. So our line is going this way, off in the distance, like that. Okay, and the back end is invisible behind the moss and stuff, but I'm going to go ahead and kind of do the structure of it with the darker colors a little bit. And then we'll put the lighter colors on top. I don't know. Yeah, I think that's close enough. I think we got it. Just checking my angles there. Okay, then I'm going to get some of my, I want my blue, I think, with my unbleached titanium for my color of the bench. And I'm just going to press my brush flat so that I get kind of a dry brush effect. I may need a, a more square brush, but I'm going to try it with this one to see what we do, how we do. Looks all right. Leave a little space. And yeah, they get a little smaller as they go away, so I'll make this side a little bit bigger. Highlight there and there. And then maybe get a little bit of that burnt umber. It's kind of a weird bench. Because it's slats kind of roll up and over. Of course, it has to be a weird bench. When I'm already bench impaired, <laughs> right? <clears throat> it looks sure. very strange. I'm gonna just make it a regular bench. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't. I don't want to have to try to fight it tonight. Not in the mood. <laughs> <laughs> don't mess with me tonight, chair. Chairs too. <sighs> <Bench lazy. laughs> Shut up! <laughs> I knew. <laughs> I knew it. It was kind of. I'm surprised you even went, went with it. I mean, it. it's, you know, it was fine it's without cute. it. It, Yeah, it is fine without it. Yeah. I think I like it with it. Just need 
to settle down and look and see what I'm seeing. Stop don't painting what I think I'm seeing. Don't show it fear. <laughs> it can sense it. <laughs> Why? Why? I just. Why don't you like me, chairs? It senses my fear. I like yes. that. Yes. All right. Well, that's not too bad. Let's do like one more slat, and I'm just going to call that good enough because that's a good bench size, and I'm just going to bring the leg down right there. I think that's good enough. It looks like a bench to me, so it doesn't have to be the fancy like rolled leg bench. I'll just do the traceable with the from the actual photo so you guys have a functioning bench to paint on yours if you want. And don't, I don't know why. It's so weird. Sometimes, like, you know, some people say they have problems with clouds. Some people have problems with painting, you know, flowers or water or whatever. We all have our hang-ups. Apparently mine are chairs. Not really sure what it is about them. But... This is over two, like Mark said. No, it's fine. It, it, we're, we're getting it there. But I didn't want to try to have to paint a fancy, weird, rounded, rounded, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that the angle is different if I don't have them rounded. So that's why I'm trying to kind of figure out my angles here. All these and this should be flat. So, or lined up, I should say, you know, these two should be lined up. I'm adding like darker burnt sienna and stuff to it. Okay. That's not too bad. It, I don't know. It, it doesn't seem like it's in scale though. Like maybe it should be about twice that big, but it's actually pretty small in my picture. If you look at it, you know, in the thing, actually, let me look at it next to next to my photo. Um, okay, so it, did I get it the right size? I think I kind of did. I think so. I think we're close. Maybe you can make it a little bit longer. And these, these should be sort of, they're sort of slightly angled because the back is angled. If they were, if they were straight up and down, they would be more parallel to us. And I didn't leave as much room for the back of the bench. So, <clears throat> I think I'm going to take this one out. Let me try that again. I probably should have drawn it. I know I should. I'm having life choices three regrets right now. <laughs> it's all right. We will get you a functioning bench. I promise. Ooh. Promise. I am not a quitter. How many people are laughing at me right now? None. Because <laughs> there's nobody watching, so it's okay. No, I think making the slats bigger helps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that angle there. It helps if you actually line it up with your photo and then just do like that. That's actually... So that back one is the right size and then do I dare try to do the rounded no, how fancy no. do I want to try to get don't do it don't do it I feel like don't I can do follow, it don't fall I feel for like I tricks. can do it I can do it because I because okay. I if I do it if I do it here then I need to bring this up to the same level right here and then it curves down like that, and then it goes to about right there, and then ends right here. Did I do it? I don't know. I can't tell. I feel like I may have done it.
Yes. And then leg comes down from the top part of that right there. And then from the corner of that, yep, right there. And this angle, so this one needs to come down farther than this one to make it look right. Okay. All right. I didn't, I don't like the back of it. Um, I think the back slats are a little too big. It, it's, it's, it's getting there. Oh. But what if you like big slats? <laughs> mm hmm Okay. All right, and then I want to square off this corner because I think that'll help make that more squared and make this have a kind of obvious line coming down. angle right there. Okay, so a little bit farther down here. There we go. Okay. And then there's a shadow in here. So I think if I get my values right on it, it'll be okay. So I'm going to take my dark blue and burnt umber and then I'm just going to shadow this part of it. In the back and kind of around the legs. Mm. Okay, well, it looks a little janky, but I think it's a rustic. We'll just call it rustic. How that a rustic bench. Adding some highlights with my unbleached titanium. I didn't bring that up enough right here. I can see that now, right here. So I just need to bring that up and around. There, that worked. This dark shadow right there. Okay, I can shadow back here if I need it, underneath. Shape it out however I need to. Widen out those support parts. I think we're good. I'm going to highlight the front of that leg a little bit more so that we can see it. Coming down. Okay. I'm not mad at it. I, I definitely think my perspective may be well, janky, but I think it's just the... It, it's kind of like that in the picture. I think I made these two I, a little bit more narrow than it is. Well, I think the, the trajectory of the back slats aren't the same as the seat. Right. That's what I mean. Yeah, that's what I just said. Okay. So I need to have these all lining up towards the same vanishing point is what you need to do. Yeah. That's better. I just widened out the space between narrowed these two these two down a little bit and narrowed down this back edge so that they're not so pointing in the same pointing together. So they're all pointing out this way. Okay, much better. Cute, 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 cute. All right, let me get some of this burnt umber and just tone the tree trunk there. I'm gonna get some of the unbleached titanium with a little bit of that blue and give my tree trunk over here a little highlight on this side. Remember, this is the light side here. I feel like there needs to be something right there. So we'll just do some small little, 
maybe some red, I feel like. A little bit of yellow oxide to tone it. Burnt sienna, or I'm sorry, um, pyrrole orange and the um, magenta here. I like mixing my own red. I like having the magenta and the orange because they're like right on the opposite side of like bright true red and they make just the most, you know, beautiful vivid reds when you mix them. You don't have to have another red in your palette that way. Use my filbert here and just kind of adding a little bit of I don't know if I love that, but I think what I don't love about it is that it's the only like when you add a new color, you kind of need three versions of it for it to look right. So you need a dark, medium, and light version, and we have just the medium version right here. So we'll just add a little bit of darker with some magenta and burnt sienna, or um, ultra burnt umber, I mean. And then we'll add some lighter. I'm getting some white. And my, when you add white to red and it goes pink and you, you could just add some yellow or some orange to make it less, less pink. I don't love that, but I'm not really sure what to put in there instead. Since I'm making it up, I'm kind of looking at pictures here to see if there's something else. So let's do some bright yellow down here. I think that'll help kind of push the plane, give it a different plane of existence. That's better. Let's put some of this over here, some of this yellowish color. And, and then if we want to, to have this be a color, I think I'm going to do a, a light yellow. But, or maybe a, maybe let's do a green. Let's see what a green looks like. Getting that yellow oxide and green. So going just a little bit more of a green. Mm. And then the yellow and unbleached titanium here. I'm thinking that the yeah, the background is just too much this color, is what the problem is. Getting some dark phthalo green and burnt sienna here. I'm gonna bring this color over, this mossy color. tree that's back here too. I forgot to put it back in, but I kind of don't hate what I've got going on back there, so I don't really want to mess with it too much. I think I want to add a little bit of highlight to this tree though. Just a little bit. That is the 
magenta, orange. smattering of color okay and then I think I want just a little bit more like a brighter highlight on these orangey ones so I think I'm going to use the unbleached titanium with my pyrrole orange let's see what I get here I may not like this maybe too saturated let's add a little bit of the yellow oxide to desaturate it just a little bit but let's pick the tops of some of these. So just kind of the and just tap in some highlights on a few. I don't have to go in this dark area here, but maybe like in here there's some also catching the light over here. Okay. What do you think? Too much? Probably could have left that a little bit darker up there. All right, okay, let's do a little bit of this down here in the leaf litter, especially where the light's hitting it. These areas. All right, I think, I think we're pretty close here there's been a request to do kind of like a close-up zoom in just so that they can see like the details of the brush strokes and stuff like that so okay. whenever you want to all right can do that uh, at the end yep pin through we'll do I add some of this mid-tone green back here just to give this area a little bit of detail since it didn't we didn't do anything back here and then if you need to, you can glaze on your walkway. I might get a little bit of the ultramarine blue and burnt sienna in my glaze. And just kind of go over the edges of it anywhere where, like here, I feel like that walkway went over the edge a little too much right there just tapping in a little bit of green color to help that I kind of I kind of do think I could widen that out a little bit. I'm going to use a little bit of the unbleached titanium, tiny bit of the blue, and just just in a couple areas, just push that back. It's hard to do now because we have all this leaf litter here, so we don't want to cover up all of our good detail that we've already got in here. But just make sure you've got kind of a highlight where it's going back out here. So I might get a little bit of that bright unbleached titanium and just make sure I've got a nice bright highlight kind of flat line here where it disappears off and comes, comes down around that corner a little bit. All right, and then this is where the glaze, get that glaze. You glaze in around the corners and edges a little bit if I need it. Burnt umber and ultramarine blue. Glaze. Glaze over, you can glaze over the 
dry paint anywhere you want a little bit more dark shadow. I think I'm happy with my bench area, so I don't think I want to mess with it too much. But then you can add, like with this brush, I have no yellow left. Get a little bit yellow. What time is it? Okay, almost two hours. Wow. Time flies. I did not feel that time going. Well, there was about, about you know, 70, 75 minutes on that bench. <laughs> The other 15 minutes was I the rest of the it. painting. I felt that. <laughs> that hurt. Ouch. Okay. A little bit of yellow here. I'm just going to tap in some little bit of leaf. Leaves? Leaves? Leaf? Tree things. Tree, tree things. Okay, so this is what I can do over here, I think. Just little dabs. This brush will make kind of leafy shapes just by tapping it. So you don't have to do a lot of work to get that look. I'm gonna Create a little bit of depth back here. All right, I think that's good. I'm gonna leave it there. Not my best work, but you know, you get what you pay for, so. <laughs> no, it's good, I like it, it's just, yeah. <laughs> There'll be a full refund on exactly. the video tonight for anybody who doesn't like it. <laughs> exactly. No, it is amazing, honey. Oh, thank it really you. is. Thank you. So what don't you like mm -hmm. about it? I don't know. Well, I, what I see is that your painting is, the ground is more level. Mm. So like the... The rise on the left-hand side isn't as drastic as it is in the picture. Oh, and yeah. And it, there's no fall-off on the right side. It looks just more like a level ground. Right, yeah. I, I don't like this part. I think I like all of this pretty much okay. I just don't love this, and I'm not really sure how to resolve it without putting that huge tree in there, which I didn't want to do. So I think that if I, I think I probably, before I put that tree branch in, if I had done something with this back here a little bit more, maybe I would like it more. You know, even, I might just try a little bit of yellow here. And just do a little, a little something back there that feels like it's a little bit more finished. And I think part of it too is there's no value right here. It's all very light. And so it just feels flat right in that area. So it's it's just but um so yeah, maybe let's try that. Let's try putting in a little bit of darker like um value back here. I'm trying to figure out how to do it without getting too complicated but so we've got our tree right there yeah that's a little bit better it kind of feels more balanced I may just have to paint over that tree no I think you're adding some depth there yeah I think that's <clears throat> it's that's pushing all that it. green back right well, I think that's what I didn't like about it. It was just flat. There was no depth right. there at all. Right. It just needed some contrast. So then I'm going to get my tree trunk color and just put that back in over the top right there. And then it's a lot better, I think. That's a burnt umber and ultramarine blue. And then put my highlight on that side. And get my 
reddish color and just dab up over that green now that I have it back there. Can create a base for our more vivid colors and also just get some of the dark burnt burnt umber, burnt sienna, and maybe do a few little grassy bits here. Maybe create a little plane right here across by adding some yellow up over that right there. See how it, now it spills down over the walkway? So just do that anywhere where you kind of need to create a little moment. These little rounded bits and they get smaller as they go back. So let's do another one over here that's a little bit smaller. Okay, that looks better. Now I like it better. That, that definitely looks a little bit better with that kind of blended in. I'm going to get a little bit of that green and just kind of tap over that. Okay. Now I don't, now I don't hate it so much. And you can, I can get some of that burnt umber and ultramarine blue, maybe a little bit of that unbleached titanium and do a little bit of the rock that's coming down right there. There's like a little bit of a cliff bit the roots of that tree coming down or the rock ledge okay so let's zoom in there's our bench not bad not bad at all for a really poor attempt at I, first, would, but I would definitely give that a strong eight. No. Eight. You were yeah. going to say six. No, I, I was going to say like a 7.5, honestly. Okay, all right. Yeah. No, actually, no, you're right. It's probably it's closer. It's all right. It's all right. No, come on. Don't, <laughs> on, don't, don't. I mean, it is it is good. But we'll move on from the bench. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we go. I think that redeemed it right here. That looks a lot better. And I, I just added a little bit of reddish on here just to kind of indicate something. But um, I probably would have taken this out and this out and it might have done a little bit better or maybe not quite so thick right there. But anyhow, it was already there and I wasn't going to mess with it. So Okay, I don't hate it now. It's all right. <laughs> but I do like that I changed the colors just a little bit more. I like the blue in there instead of just the brown tones throughout. I think it help, helped kind of balance out all of this orangey red, um, make it a little feel a little fresher to me. I don't know. It's up to you. Let me know in the comments if you like the blue or in the purple tones in it. I'd be curious to know. All right. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, super chat. All right, I'm going to sign it. Sign it while you're while you're doing that. Super chat. Don't go anywhere yet. So from our friend Carol. Oh. Such a sad time. But thank you for your uh, sad time for you when you're and you were here to cheer us up. Oh. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Don't make thank me you. cry. <laughs> <laughs> I did so good. <laughs> Oh, see? We missed yeah. our little kitty in the studio. She was yeah. always over there getting in Mark's way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah. she was an old girl. She was 16, and she was really in a lot of pain, and yeah. it was time. So I had dementia and hyperthyroidism and no teeth. and <sighs> yeah. It was, yeah, just and something. And they thought some kidney disease too that was undiagnosed yet because she was down to five pounds it was just sad she was yeah. just in a lot of pain so but she brought so, a lot of good memories so she's so she was the best cat just a sweetheart we had her for 16 years we were very lucky so 
thank you guys for all the sweet messages um, today. It's been a rough day, but we really appreciate you, you our family, um, mm -hmm. and our studio family, we should call that. Our art family. <laughs> our art family, yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys are the best. So thank you so much. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and we'll see see you we will not be here next week because next week Ooh, is halloween, halloween so yeah. it fell on a tuesday and i just i was gonna record ahead of time and i just haven't gotten it done so with everything going on um so we're just not gonna have a video next week so sorry about that but we'll be back um the following week with uh and check our newsletter if you haven't signed up yet um go to thankfulart.com um go ahead and pop that up there for them um, thankfulart.com and um, sign up for our newsletter at the very bottom of the page. It will um, we'll send that out with our new schedule um, on Friday, so you'll get to see what we're painting oh, yeah. on in November. And we got a lot of we're starting on Christmas, like <coughs> okay. got to small hint. But we're as, starting on Christmas, not as early as the stores. We but. did not start early enough last year, and I did True. not get enough Christmas in. So we are starting <laughs> in November, and we are going to be doing Christmas all the way through November to mid December. Because I figure if you haven't done your Christmas by mid December, mid November, it's you know, yeah. let's get real, it's probably not going to happen. Um, so, <laughs> so we're gonna switch over to to. Uh, Christmas next week or next time. So hope you have a happy Halloween. Stay safe and we'll see you next time. Bye guys.